Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and girls and boys and other humanoids. Anyway, we are coming to you live from our basement. I'm Emily, and that is Elk. But fun story we have switched which side of the basement we are on as part of the agreement and contract that our mom made us write up with each other that every few weeks we have to switch because one side has a window but the other side has the heater that's true but i'm still sitting in my hazmat suit because even though we had a sanitation department come down here and clean up in their hazmat suits i don't trust them and emily was here before so that's why i'm still in the hazmat suit so if i don't sound so clear that's why yeah i mean i only see once but uh some people not to name any names else <laughs> are a little germaphobic but it's fine we all have our beautiful flaws and the opposite of flaws and that's what makes us human and special and i've been told this outfit is very slimming on me so that's why i you know what you do pull with it me. off see thank you thank you so uh, today we're going to talk about a book that we both read recently. It's called Hope and Other Punchlines by Julie Boxbaum. And um, just to give a quick overview, the short version of it, it's actually a book that's about 9-11, which was interesting to see now because we already... Too soon? Uh -huh. Too soon? No, well, because we're, we're already at a point where there is a generation that didn't grow up with 9-11. There is a full generation, and yeah, everyone expects that of babies and little kids, but kids, people who are adultish age, adultish, because if you talk about 19, 20-year-olds who don't know 9-11, they don't know that moment of when, you know, the planes crash and the towers came down. So it's interesting that this book came out I mean, within the last couple of years, but that's also part of why... That's also part of it with its draw, I think. So just a quick, on our rating scale for how many pearls you gotta be clutching. Violence, we gave it a two, and we'll explain that soon. Language has a four, and romance, we gave like a 2.5, which we'll explain. Just straight out, language has a four because there were some F-bombs that were dropped. So that just, that just shot the scale up and made us grab for all the pearls. We don't really explain that much more. Just gave a little short, short summary of the book. There's, um, there's this kid's name is Noah, and there's a girl whose name is Abby. And she, Abby was the, the, she was in a picture that was taken on 9-11. She's a little girl, and she's holding, like, a balloon, and the towers are falling behind her. So they call her, like, oh, baby hope, that there's hope in the face of, like, of this tragedy, etc. So Noah's obsessed with finding the other people who are in this picture. And eventually we find out that one of the people in the photo is his dad, that they never heard from him after he went back into the towers and it was he went back to help etc etc so that's kind of the basis for this they both end up at the same summer camp and they're both counselors there and noah kind of ropes abby into this quest of going to find these other people and it is nice because they do go to find some of the other people in the in the photographs which they know they're out there because all these are these articles and stuff have been written on them but it is a nice well, not something nice, but it is an interesting glimpse into different faces and, and outlooks of 9-11. Um, and then Vines, we did it too, which I was, we were, I was talking about this with Emily. So Emily, you want to explain that one? Yeah, well, so it's about 9-11. So there's violence and it does talk about people jumping from buildings and people covered in ash and, you know, the terrible things that happened on that tragic day but it's in context but it's a little bit of a different context than uh like lord of the rings war yeah. you know between orcs and elves because it's something that really happened it's something that really happened recently and it's a it feels a little bit more personal than than even like world war ii which is also something real and something that happened recently but it's a ton of soldiers in battles and you know that soldiers in battles are going to get hurt right but these are innocent people at work or just walking around so it, it for especially a younger teen because this is young adults so especially for a younger teen the idea of you're not reading about a woman jumping from a building which is something you can picture it might be a little bit more real this might be a little bit more triggering a little bit harder to read 
Right. And then also for romance, it's a 2.5 because there is there is kissing that happens because obviously Noah and Abby just end up hooking up because apparently if there's a boy in a book and a girl in a book, they have to hook up at some point. And then uh, yeah. there were other things that you were saying, Emily, about where we had to push it up. Oh, yeah. Well, so Abby works at a summer camp. Abby and I work at a summer camp. That's where a lot of it's set. And there are older counselors who are talking about hooking up with each other and... Um, what Noah's gay best friend on several occasions talks about older guys and one guy says I want to have his babies which is maybe someone should explain to him how babies are born <laughs> uh, but I think Abby also makes a similar comment about oh I want to have his babies so sex and a little bit of an older understanding of romance is there but nothing explicit like we don't they don't have sex we don't see people hooking up but it's talked about yeah and also because sometimes teens do talk that way yeah. um just sort of kind of jokes or whatever that they make do move in that direction yeah we also, i think overall we agreed that we had we sort of had mixed feelings about this book because on the one hand you do have it was and i guess weird to use the word nice but it was we liked the idea of the book that first of all it takes place with 9 11 and it made the story like real again Especially for us that we lived through it, but it really did. I think it really did bring home the the, the loss and the after effects of nine eleven in a pretty good, in a, in a very real way. You didn't have to rely adding in the the comedy element to it, or adding in the teen summer camp element to it. Kind of balanced it, so you weren't relying on certain sappy cliches. You weren't relying. You didn't have to. You didn't have to trick us into feeling for these people in the book. But there was also I don't know. There was something else about it that it didn't. Like I'm not, that I wasn't totally sold on the book. Yeah, I I found my biggest thing was that I just couldn't empathize with the teenage characters. And in fact, I found myself empathizing with the parents a little bit more, which was frankly worrying. I know, because I don't want to be so old that young adult novels feel young. But then I realized these kids like were born on 9-11. I remember 9-11, so I am really in a different generation now, and I am a little bit older. So once I got to a certain point in the book, I couldn't put it down, and I really enjoyed it. But to get to that point, to accept that the way that these teenagers were thinking was valid, because, oh yeah, they're teenagers, and they're kind of dumb, and this is how their minds work. Also, I was not that stupid as a teenager, just to be clear. I was very mature for my age. Yeah, obviously, um, but, yeah. But this is apparently how other teenagers thought. So once I just accepted that, okay, they're younger, they're going to do some stupid things that I don't agree with. Um, the only thing that I had, like, a major problem with was that some of the plot was hinged upon miscommunication. Yeah, I don't go for that either, yeah. It's just not very strong, and it's it's not, unless you've made it very, given a very good reason why these two characters, why this one character won't share something personal, or why this other one can't talk to another one, miscommunication isn't good because as a writer you can make your characters do anything. Right. So why are your characters not talking to each other? Yeah. It also just, it feels like it's not, it, I don't want to say it feels cheap, but I guess cheap, because you're like... All you had to do was give one more line of communication in the either in the dialogue or whatever it was, and it would have cleared up so much that some other silly stuff then doesn't also have to happen. Because so many not good things usually happen when there's a miscommunication. You see that so much. The other thing that people also they don't like when someone's like, Oh, I didn't tell you because I was trying to protect you. I think we've gotten to the point where most people hate that line. Where it's yeah. just even though we do know that there are times we don't we don't tell people stuff, it's usually because we're not sure how they're gonna react. But in this situation, him like Noah saying like, "Oh, my dad's in that photo," I I don't I didn't feel like that was gonna change their relationship. I think if anything, she might have been more prone to helping him find 100%. the other people in the photo. Yeah. 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 I did not. Yeah. I also want to mention we haven't talked about it much, and it has I don't know if it's come up in our other episodes um there's drinking for sure the characters drink and i don't know about i don't think drugs but there is drinking so that's just something to also i think 
think be aware of. We don't have a specific rating for it, but these are not people who are of the age to be drinking and they go to parties and drinking happens. So it's just something to be aware of if that's not the kind of thing you want to be reading or want someone you know to be reading. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Especially because it's in a very, um, like this is what happens kind of way. There's not, there's not necessarily a big deal surrounding it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, I ultimately liked it and I think I would recommend it to someone because it was thoughtful and you're right. I, even though I lived, I was alive during 9-11, I think I was nine. I don't, I think I was still young enough that I know what happened, but I don't really think I thought about the after effects for a lot of people and how there are still people who's, you know, don't have parents because of that and, you know, their whole lives are it didn't just happen and then end like people's lives were forever changed and it's still happening so i thought it did a really nice job of making me think about things i wouldn't have thought about otherwise yeah that's probably the biggest draw because they're also they focus on the one community that almost everybody in the community was impacted somehow and that's based on a real community where that happened and also because what it was a couple of years ago i don't even know if it's a, i don't even know if it's years i think a year or two ago at this point with their there was something about they were trying to increase the funding or continue the funding for the first aid responders from 9-11 because oh, there's still yeah. so many um, mental, not mental, um, medical fallouts from it. That people who went running straight into the building when there's all these toxins and stuff is flying around and that, that physically in, impacted them. So yeah. that's also a good thing. We talk about them as being, you know, the heroes who went in and responded right away and that is a big deal. But it's also important to realize that there is life that happens after, there's a day-to-day life that happens after the big hero moment. So yeah, exactly. yeah, it was very thought provoking as a book. There are there are some pearl clutching moments if someone really can't handle that sort of stuff. Um, but it is it, it was, I think it did serve its purpose of bringing making nine eleven real again, um, so many years later. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah. Oh, we do have to talk about this is a semi pearl clutch. I guess it depends upon the person. So Noah's best friend is gay. Um. Which, yeah, he's gay. End of story. But he a few times, I think twice in the book, this gay character comments on the attractiveness of older men. One who's like in his 50s and one who's in his 40s. And I found that weird and concerning. And I think it would be equally weird if a girl commented on an older man or if a young teenage boy commented on the hotness and saying I want to have his or her babies for an older woman um and I think teenagers really do talk that way I definitely had friends say I want to have his or her babies again people should probably be taking more health classes to learn how babies are born <laughs> but besides the point um it was a little like uh, this is another thing about being an adult now when I read young things or books for young adults and talking about sex I'm like oh this feels almost like it's wrong because I'm an adult and they're kids so eh, I found that like a little pearl clutchy yeah well I think that's also um we were sort of talking about this part of as part of why sometimes young adult contemporary novels are a little bit harder to read I think as an adult because the way kids talk now and you hear it sometimes it it doesn't it just really sounds young it really does so if an author's imitating the way kids talk now you're like, you're so, 16 year olds, sure they have a mind to really start grasping concepts and ideas that, you know, a middle grader can't, but you don't have the life experience yet to put any of that into, to know what to do with this vast, like mental capacities that you have now. So when they're saying certain things, you're like, you're really, you are young. <laughs> so sometimes it does make it harder to relate to them. But there was something about the dialogue that I also, I did, I was kind of like, nah, um, I didn't love that either. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess that's hope and other punchlines. Um, I have to go. I don't know if you noticed, but I think your side of the basement is bigger than mine. Um, I'm going to get out the tape measure yeah. just because you're older. It's not fair. No, yeah, um, um, we're going to use, we'll use my tape, tape measure. I have a good tape measure to use for it. it oh, do you? Yeah, it's really accurate too. Oh, okay, great. All right, so we're going to figure that out. And I guess we'll uh, catch y'all next time. Bye, everyone.